Now, I wanted to buy this book for a while. You know, um, great, right? So what made me decide to buy it um, a while back? Well, I have read it and I wanted to do a book, um, book talk and book review on it. It's just that I, it's, I guess it's, <laughs> it's very daunting, right? It's, it's huge. So I, I have seen it a lot and um, of course, you know, I, I have saw her video and she talked about I'm great, right? Until um, I have heard about it when I was going to college um, by a um, college counselor. She was talking about grid and stuff like that. Uh, so we're going to be talking about, you know, the talents, uh, whether you have it or you haven't. And we're talking, we're going to talk about the myth of it all, right? I have finally come to the conclusion of, you know, I have... Try, I'm trying to solve a lot of people problem and you know there's a niche that certainly need improvement certainly need a lot of help and I can clearly see that and for some odd reason we want things easy right so how did I come and uh, grab with this book well uh, no matter who you are and what you are um, you don't know how impactful, how influential you can become. Um, like she's an author and she, you know, uh, she um, uh, put it into a book, read and you know, she uh, studied and interviewed top expert on, right? Great. And I have interviewed, you know, uh, Win Ch a Win Chun Kung Fu master, and he was talking about grit, and that's how I come across grit. Now, when it comes to talent, People are distracted by talent, right? Am I, you know, I'm not a genius, right? I'm not that intelligent. Well, now people view me as intelligent. Isn't, so why they perceive me to be that way instead of the guy who don't, you know, who don't know a lot of things? It's because I, over the years, I have read and studied and diligently practiced what I know, and it's not always easy. And I struggle of building a skill set. It's not perfecting. You know, I come to the conclusion that when I listen, uh, when I read book on mastery, and when I listen to Kung Fu masters or, uh, you know, Jeet Kune Do master like Ron Balicki, there's no mastering anything, but what you can do is get better at it and improve about 10,000 hours or more, right? And a lot of people leave things to chance. I feel sad when people say, you know, that person, it's, he probably had it in him, it's in his genes. And so we'll, and then we get envy of them and we never develop the skill necessary to build that. Um, to perfect it or well there's no perfecting there's always improvement right and we never you know when it comes to pa our passions where it's art art is a little bit difficult those who are good at art they know that there's always room to improve right because there's so many facets around uh, creating art whatever that is Firmness of mind and spirit, unyielding courage in the face of hardship or danger. That's mean grit. That's the definition of grit, right? And you know, the, over the years, I have understood. You know, I'm trying to solve. Well, there is a niche where you know I'm trying to solve, and it's not always easy to overcome the uh, what they know, right? You know, the confirmation bias that see in with the reality and as you know the older that they get the more they consume the content the more they think that their existing belief is true then it become a chain of habits so the really successful people know that there's always more room to improve they persist even the face of difficulty right and that make them more uh, stronger and they develop be resilient to things and I have noticed that within myself when it comes to uh well that's not I guess it's a skill set uh following up uh it's a skill set that you I have to develop 
to in order to get the interview that I need, right? And I don't want to leave things to chance and I don't want to be called lucky or stuff like that. You know, behind the scene of it all, people people who view successful people who are talented and they have the gift, but they never seen the hours, amount of hours of practice, uh, which they, uh, you never seen it behind the scene, right? You don't see it until they show it in public, right? And you don't see the hours of mistakes that they make when they draw an art and they throw, like they make the mistake, they erase, make mistakes, they throw away the paper, they get frustrated, you know? I remember I was like that. I remember there was a uh, long time ago, I remember I was drawing and I was frustrated and I throw it away. Most of the time, I don't want to do it. And the mistakes is, the, you know, for those who, uh, you know, Kung Fu Master is because they understood that they persevere of understanding that there's always more to learn. But I think that's the grit mindset is like, we learn that there is a fixed mindset and there's a growth mindset. People who have fixed mindset that, you know, you can't, um, I talked this in my video, right? That people who have a fixed mindset can't see that they self grow, right, anymore. They see that the ability that they have are really set. While the growth mindset that there's, even if it's hard, they, they understood that they can always improve. For me, I'm a special education. I didn't know that I can improve my uh, brain cells, that it can grow, that it can, like, once you start learning how to learn, you, like, once you start, like, becoming, uh, you enjoy learning, what happens is you don't stop learning. You know that there's always more to learn. And you develop the habit of being open-minded, not close-minded, because, you know, close-minded meaning that you shut off good ideas or, uh, ideas that could help uh, you grow in essence, you know, and you will, you know, uh, your whole life, will, you will see your, like, okay, so basically what I'm saying is your whole life is bounded by the ideas, because the ideas and belief, the idea that turns into a belief, it control how you see and act towards yourself and the world, and it's how, how you're going to behave from now on. But if you um, acquire new skill, acquire, you know that you can acquire new skills and build new skills, then you know that you'll always be growing and continue moving forward in life and you're never stagnant, moving back and forth. And so that's how I see it with each and every, like they're good, let's say if they're art, and they're artists and they're, and uh, you know, people who are good at a subject really well, one subject, they know that well, but how come they're not moving forward? Because they they have succumbed to the confirmation bias that that's what they're good at. So that's they don't need to any acquire any skills level, right? But I know that as the false assumption that they have is that there's oh I, I believe that there's always more to learn, just like any martial arts system. They the like the higher the older their their wisdom the they understand that there's always more to learn, you know. You know, when I was interviewing a uh, uh, interviewing a Wing Chun Kung Fu master, he was uh, he was learning, like he didn't know what Google Hangout because I usually do Google Hangout, and he was looking and searching and how wise is he, how how observant is he, and I saw that within him, and I was like, wow, I, I wish people were more like this. Like young people should be more like, um, like they should start like you know how like little kids they start. Like uh, playing and learning, because little kids learn really fast. Like the babies, they learn really fast. But as adults, we tend to stop learning. We start, we stagnate, and we stop growing, and we stop building new skills, and we stop being curious about things. And um, I notice that people. So I hear uh, both sides where you know school favors the you know left hemisphere of the brain, while you know the right hemisphere of the people they use imagination and. You know, they, they, that, like, they're out of balance. And I come to realize it's about using our brain effectively to learn to navigate our life. 
And this is where both come from. Like people who believe in the myth of talent, they won't develop a skill. They won't improve. They won't do anything to do. Well, um, like they believe that somehow they can't be good at what they do. They, 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 because it is the idea that is fixed within them. So they don't want to improve. They just want to stay stagnant and fall. That's how you, you, um, fall behind in life. So I'm going to read you, uh, the thing that I found. Here you go. Grit isn't just working incredibly hard. That's only part of it. Pause. Why? Well, for one thing, there's no shortcut to excellence. Developing real experience, expertise, figuring out really hard problems is all take time, longer than most people imagine. And then, you know, you got to apply those skills and produce good or goods or service that are val valuable to people. Rome wasn't a building a day. He, he was listening, I can say. And here's the really important thing. Grit is about working on something you care about so much that you're willing to stay loyal to it. It's doing what you love. I get that. Right. It's doing what you love, but it's not just falling in love, staying in love. Grit has two components, passion and perseverance. If you want to dig deep, a little, little deeper, you can calculate separate schools for components. For passion school, add up your, oh, she was talking about passion. The consistent pattern for service school, more often to, uh, topping passion school, is a clue that passion and perseverance aren't exactly the same. While taking the grit scale, you might have noticed that none of the passion questions ask how intensely you committed to your goals. This means same ad because the word passion is often used to describe intense emotion. For a lot of people, passion is synonymous with infatuation and um, obsession. But in interviews, but what it takes to succeed, high achievers often talk about commitment of different kind rather than intensity. What comes up again and again in the remark of the idea of consistent over time. Um, like what hard work over time? Let me see. Here we go. Talent is how quickly your skill improves than you invest um, effort. Achievement is what happens when you take your acquired skill and use them. Of course, your opportunity, for example, having a great coach or teacher matter uh, tremendously too. And maybe more than anything about the individual. My theory doesn't address these outside forces, nor does it include luck. It's about psychology of achievement, but because psychology is all that matter, it is in company. So I think it's useful what this theory said that when you Concern an individual in a identical uh, circumstance, what each achievement depend on just two things, talent and effort. Talent, how fast we improve in skill, absolutely matter. But effort factors in the calculation twice, not once. Effort builds skills at the very same time effort makes skills productive. Let me give you an example. Mm, she was talking about uh, Potter, right? Mm. Talent times Effort equals skill, skill time uh, effort equals achievement. So that is the whole thing is, I believe that if we want to get good at something, we must persevere in the uh, hardship of time because it helped. Like, I forgot, it was, oh yeah, okay, I remember. It, um, one of the book I read, it's called Deliberate Practice, right? It is stretching. That's why you want to have a stretch goal where basically there's, uh, I think there's a performance goals and the stretch goals. I can't remember, but stretch goals is where you, you get out of your comfort zone, you get things a little bit harder and it stretch you to the point that you, you hone the skills really good. That's why a lot of uh, martial artists stress, stretch out their goals and they, they, they're good at it because you know, they have to self-awareness around that. And that's why I stretch myself to have a stretch goal because that where I can improve. While a performance goal is like where you're getting A, right? You can use memory, uh, facts and you can memorize facts and figures, but it doesn't help you grow. Helping you grow is you're, you're developing a skill um, to, you know, I think life is about building skills and momentum, right? Building skills that are useful to you or to, uh, so you can be valuable to the marketplace. Because um, for some odd reason, like what, the day that we leave 
college or school, we stop learning. It's the same as adults. People stop learning. They don't read anymore. They don't like learning. They just want things to take the chance. But this is your life. I don't think that building skills should take this chance. You should build upon skills while you're still alive. You should be able to uh, become a sponge for ideas and use these ideas to uh, make you great. Excellent isn't built in a, um, in a day how you see successful are now. It's built back in the past where they did the work. They knew that they're preparing for something great in the future. That's why they do it today. That's why I do it today. That's why I read the books. That's why I develop the skill today so I can prepare for an opportunity will come in the future, right? Um, that's what I think. And passion and passion alone isn't, um, uh, what I see is passion alone. Let's say if I'm passionate about the uh, subject, the law of attraction, but if I don't acquire any other skill set, then I can't help and solve other people's problems, can I? If I only, only understood about the subject that I'm passionately interested in, then I cannot help other people. That I must build other skills uh, that uh, 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 be able to inspire and uplift them. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, this is a great book. So, uh, I highly recommend that you get this book. Subscribe to my channel, like my video, and I'll see you next time.